When we hurt, we want something done as soon as possible because the pain is really inhibiting a lot of what we can do, especially if it's a sports injury or if we have a problem with a low back or a neck. Uh, sometimes uh, the pain there can be really difficult. In people who have spinal stenosis, frequently we're doing what are called epidural uh, spinal injections that use steroids. And they work pretty well in the short term. They relieve the pain a lot of the time. And for some people, they actually improve over the long haul substantially. But a new study shows that in people who have these epidural injections, that over the long haul, they don't do as well. There was a study done that was published in, in the journal Spine in February of 2013 that showed that after four years, those people who had epidural spinal injections or uh, steroid injections had more pain and less function. What's happening there? Basically, what we're looking at is steroids that are very powerful anti-inflammatory agents, and they're wonderful for relieving pain. We found that out back in the late 50s when steroids finally came out, and we used them in people who had rheumatoid arthritis, and the results were stunning. People did just fantastically well on it for a period of a few months, and then the side effects came on. Now, when we give epidural injections in the spine, what happens is we have a powerful anti-inflammatory effect. And if we put that, it, we inject that in exactly the right place, we have a nice result and people are very happy with it. But the problem is, is that over time, the inflammation reduction is important, but the lack of healing, the retarded healing, the slowed healing is always a factor. And that's why the orthopedists are frequently saying, well, we can try it a few times, but after that, we're probably best off not doing that because the long-term effects are going to be worse. And this study shows that. What they showed in these people who eventually came to surgery is that they had longer and more complicated surgeries, and they also stayed in the hospital longer. And, of course, the risks and complications of surgery go up in that setting. We also know that people uh, can use other approaches. And there are ways to use... Uh, physical therapy and acupuncture, chiropractic, all kinds of body work, hypnotherapy. There are many different complementary and alternative therapy strategies that are very good, particularly when they're used in combination. In my practice, I use combinations of therapy regularly, and I hook it up to, generally, a technology that's called photon stimulation. It's infrared light therapy. And for those of you that would like to learn about this most amazing technology, probably the most impressive thing I've seen in my practice in 45 years, go to drsabuto.com, put infrared light therapy in the search box, and many audios and videos will come up that will explain to you how it works. But basically, what we're looking at is a technology that increases circulation so it can provide more blood and nutrients to those areas where there's not good circulation, like an injury. It increases uh, the production of ATP, which is what makes cells work. Gas makes a car work. ATP makes your cells work. And when you shine that infrared light, it makes more ATP and it allows your cells to recover more. It increases lymphatic drainage and it relieves pain. And it causes healing. So contrary to that steroid injection, which is anti-inflammatory and reduces healing, these, the infrared light therapy increases the reduction in pain, but also increases the healing. So we've got a, a strategy here that uses many different therapies and, of course, looks at surgery as a possibility, but that's usually the last choice in, in my practice. So what we have here is an integrative approach that makes a lot of sense. We know now that this literature is out, uh, that we don't really want to be using a lot of steroid injections because if, the, if over the long haul of four years, people are going to be doing worse than the people that didn't get the steroid injections, we should be thinking about a different approach. And the integrative approach is what I recommend.